Hey, what's up, y'all? So I was able to get my hands on one of the elusive WF 7720s. I was able to find it on the Epson website under the clearance section. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I set them up for printing with sublimation ink. So the first thing I'll do is get it unboxed. I'll go ahead and get the plastic and the tape off. I'm going to plug it up and power it on. It's going to ask for the printer cartridges. We'll go ahead and snap the cartridges that came with it in. And wait for it to finish up its initialization. Once the initialization is complete, I'll set the paper size. In this case, it's legal and premium matte. Once it finishes that, I'll go ahead and set up the Wi-Fi. And once that's complete, I'll go ahead and load some paper and run a nozzle check just to make sure that the printer is printing a good pattern with the original Epson ink. That way, if I run into any problems down the road, I know it's something that I did and I can retrace any steps that I made back to this point. This nozzle check printed great on the first try, so it looks like it's good to go and in good working order. So now I'll fill and prime the cartridges. I'm going to be using Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation ink. So when filling the empty cartridges with sublimation ink or any third party ink, you're going to want to make sure you prime them as well. All right, so I'm going to take this cover off here so you can see when I prime it, what happens. So once you get the ink in there, you're going to see that this chamber here is going to be empty. So what we're going to do is take a syringe we're going to insert it into the fill hole here we're going to make sure our vent hole is plugged we're going to put our colored plug in our vent hole we're going to pull up on the syringe and let it fall and what's going to happen is that ink's going to fill that chamber I'll make sure I do it a couple times. And once it gets in that chamber, at least halfway full, then you can go ahead and continue filling it the rest of the way up with ink. And I'm not going to fill this one all the way up just because I'm going to wind up selling this printer. So. <clears throat> and that's how you get it to prime. the. That's how you prime the cartridge. And you continue filling it up and you're good to go. Take this vent plug, move it from the vent hole position to the fill hole position. Good to go. And we on to the next one and fill up the rest of them.
Once I have the cartridges filled and primed, I'll replace the original cartridges with the refilled cartridges. To do that, I'm just going to go to cartridge replacement in the settings menu. I'm gonna run a final nozzle check, and that's good. Now the ink change is complete, we'll go to the computer to finish up the install of the driver and the chipless firmware. All right, so once you got your printer set up and we got it initialized and we got the Wi-Fi set up, it's time to go ahead and install the driver and to install the uh, chipless firmware. So first thing you wanna do is install the driver. So I'm going to go to your browser and you want to go to epson.com forward slash USA or depending on if you're in somewhere else, whatever your Epson homepage is, you're going to click on search. Um, we're going to type in our model number, which is 7720. A couple of options are going to pop up. Uh, either one of these will work. You're just going to click on the support link. Once you're in the support section, you're going to click on drivers. You don't need the utilities and combo package. Um, we're just going to click on the driver. So we're going to click on download. And it's going to download. Now, what I would like to do is create a folder on my desktop. So I'm going to go to my desktop real quick. And we're going to just right click, go click on new. We'll click folder and I'm going to type in 7720 files. Uh, now, what this will allow me to do is create a folder so that any of the files that I'm going to be using for the driver, for the chipless firmware install, will be all located in one spot. It'll be easier for me to find, also easier for me to delete. Uh, so, we'll go back to the uh, web page here. And when it asks to download, we're just going to download it into that uh, folder that we created. So 7720 files here on the desktop. And we'll click on save. All right. And this is our printer driver. So we'll go ahead and click on that. We'll click yes here to this user account control. Um, I'm not going to set this as my default printer. And being that we're going to be installing chipless firmware later, we're going to uncheck this automatically update software. We'll click OK here. Uh, it's going to ask you for the language, it's English. We're going to click OK. We're going to click Agree here to the license agreement. Um, we're going to do Yes for the network connection. We're just going to install it over the network for now. It's going to find it on the network. And we're going to click on OK. All right, so it's done with the printer driver uh, install. We'll click OK here. And then we're just going to click uh, right click on this uh, icon down here in the tray. We'll click on printer settings. And here's the printer driver settings for the, for the printer. Now, I like to make presets here so that anytime I print, uh, with the sublimation paper that I'm using and the sublimation ink that I'm using, um, it's already uh, done in a preset for me. So I use a Dynamite Gorilla sublimation ink. I also use a sub 120 G uh, sublimation paper. So what I'm going to do is create a preset for that um, paper source. I'm going to be using paper set one. Um, we're going to go to legal for the size. I print in landscape. Um, uh, paper type is going to be premium presentation matte. And my quality is going to be high. 
also uh, in this more um, in this more option tab we're gonna click on a mirror image and we're gonna uncheck high speed we're gonna go up here to this color correction area here we're gonna click on custom then we're gonna click on advanced we're gonna click on this color controls radio button here I like to use the Epson vivid profile some people use WRGB it's different settings that's totally fine um, but again, what works for me is Epson Vivid. So I click on that. I click on slide bar. For cyan, I put my value at two. Magenta, I put my value at negative 20. And for yellow, I'll put my value at negative 15. And this will get me in the ballpark on adjusting my uh, final product or the, 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 when the final product gets done printing and pressing. I can adjust these values if I need to to get uh, the, the final product closer to the image that's on the screen. So we'll go ahead and click, stick with this for now and we'll click OK. Um, also, I don't I'm not a big fan of Epson status monitor three. So I go in extended settings and I uncheck enable status monitor three and click OK here. Um, it would go back to the more options tab and then we're going to save all those settings that we just made into a preset so we're going to click on add remove preset we're going to give it a name we're going to give it a sub 120 g epson vivid and then in the comments i'm going to put in my values here so my sign is going to be 2, if I can type, sign 2, uh, magenta was negative 20, and yellow was negative 15. And that's the way if I need to go back and change any of these values, I have a baseline, I have it, you know, notated here of what the values were originally. So um, we're going to give this a little icon here. I'll give it this guy and click save and close and now every time I want to print I can just click this profile here and click OK and then I know that it's going to be the best settings for the printer uh, for the paper that I'm using so I click OK here and uh, now we're done actually setting up the the printer driver so now we'll go ahead and go to the chipless firmware install so we're going to go to inkchip.net and uh, from here uh, inkchip.net uh, is where I get all my uh, chipless firmware for the printers that I use um, I only use printers that uh, are supported by chipless firmware except for the 7820 and 7840 and at the moment that's being developed so should be sometime this year before it comes out but from here what we're going to do is just go to um, go to soft that's for software and they got it broken down here into different um, different series of the printers in our case we're going to be in the WF series or the workforce series here so our model is the 7720 which is on this line here so what we're going to do is download the firmware and again we're going to be downloading into that 7720 files folder that we created earlier uh oh, I got a failed download here. We'll try it again. Okay, yeah, it failed that first time. So we'll let this download. So we're going to download the um, the firmware, and then we're going to download the activation as well into that same folder here. So total, we should have three files in that folder. It should be the 7720, the printer driver that we downloaded from Epson, and then these two files um, from inkchip.net. Now you can also, um, if you're having any kind of problems uh, installing this, there's always a, a video you can go to here, and it'll give you the uh, instructions here uh, from their from their site as well. How to? So click 
click out of that. All right, looks like everything's done downloading here. I'm going to close this bar out. All right, and so we'll go back to our 7720 files. And now it's time to uh, install the firmware, the chipless firmware. So we're going to click on this file here, and it needs to extract. It's already in a, it's an archive file, so we're going to right-click on it. I use pzip, um, but you might see a winzip or it might just be the default windows extracted there. You're just going to right click on it, look for extract or look for the uh, archiving software that you have and extract it. So we're going to extract it into this folder here. All right. So once we got it extracted into this folder, we're just going to double click on it and we're going to uh, run this this uh, file here, this uh, 7710 uh, file. It's 7710 and the 7720 share the same firmware. So we double click on that. It's going to give us a UAC window. We're going to click on yes. And then it's going to come to the Epson firmware updater. So we're going to click on next here. Now this has to be done via the USB cable. So you have to make sure your USB cable is connected from the printer to the, to the computer. Click on agree here, hit next. Oh, I said all of that and never plugged in my um, USB cable. So let me follow my own instruction here. There we go. And just to be on the safe side, um, we're going to go ahead and refresh it. So it says same version for the 7710 because it's already chipless, but we want to make sure that it's the USB, uh, box that's checked or the connection type. Again, you can't do it over the uh over the network so make sure it's on usb we're going to click on start it's going to ask you want to proceed with the firmware update click on yes and what's happening off camera right now is the printer is going through an update it's going to say preparing for firmware update on the screen and once it's doing that what you want to do is uh just let it go through its thing you don't want to cut it off. You don't want to disrupt it while it's doing that or it could cause um, a lot more problems than you really want to deal with. So we'll let it go ahead and finish doing its thing. Okay, so the printer just shut off and restarted. And you're going to see this jump up to about like 85% on the screen here. I'll wait for it to do that. You can hear it kind of restarting here. So once it restarts, oh, this one says 100%. So this one will go ahead and complete. And once it completes, you're just going to click on finish. All right. So now that's uh, installed. And now we have to go ahead and actually activate the uh, firmware. So the chipless firmware is installed. Now it has to be activated. So we go to this ink chip activation. Now, when you double click on this one, it's going to tell you that Windows protected your PC. Um, just click on more info. And then we're going to click on run anyway. So once you click on run info and run anyway, you're going to get to this screen here. It's the activation tools um, program and it's the actually uh, activate the chipless firmware. Now you do have to pay for an activation code and we're going to go over that here in a second. So first thing we have to do is wait for this to, to finish uh, downloading this update. It checks with the server first, sees if there's any newer versions out there, and then it updates. So we're going to wait for it to finish doing that. All right, so 
once it does that, it's gonna update. It's gonna update the uh, the program. And it's gonna ask you to rerun it. Just click OK, and you're gonna simply rerun it. And when you rerun it, it's gonna give you this current version. It's the latest at the top, so you should be good to go. All right, so now you'll need the activation code. So what you do or to activate the firmware, you click on activate online and it's going to ask you for a code. Now, if you don't have a code, you have to purchase one from inkchip.net. So we go back to inkchip.net and we're going to go to buy. We click on the buy button and then we're going to go down to um, our series here, which is workforce, and then we're going to click on our printer model, which is the 7720, which is here. And it's going to tell you that it's $35. Click add to cart. Right. So then you go up here to the cart. And when you go here, if you go to your coupon code, we're going to type in gorilla and you apply that coupon code and you're going to save 10 percent so goes from 35 to 3150 proceed to check out here and when you proceed to check out and finish up your um you finish up your purchase what will happen is you'll get an email with an activation key in it now i've already got an activation key so I'm going to go to our desktop and get my activation key and I'm going to copy it. So we're going to pretend this is my email with the activation key. So now what I also like to do in my 7720 files here, we're going to create a text document, go to new text document and activation key. So just in case you ever lose it, you always have it stored somewhere. So, all right. So, okay. Where are we at? All right. So, now, uh, again, this has to be done uh, with the USB cable connected. So you'll see USB up here and you'll see your printer, uh, your printer uh, model after as well. So we'll click on activate online. Then we're going to insert our code. And click OK. And then it's going to go ahead and write that code to the printer. So now, um, after we do a, a a um, power cycle of the printer. So as we turn it off uh, and turn it back on, like these instructions say, um, it'll be uh, chipless forever uh, or until you um, mistakenly update the firmware. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. All right. We can click OK here. And while it's turning off, I'm going to go ahead and copy this activation code to my uh, activation key text, uh, text file that we had made. Uh, let's see. All right, so paste that recovery code. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this printer back on. So once the printer reboots or turns back on, it's now permanently that uh, chipless firmware is permanently written to the printer. All right. So that's good to go there. So we're going to save that X out of here. And we can close out of here because the uh, chipless firmware process is completed. And once that's done, I'll print a purge sheet. You can find these anywhere online. Gonna go ahead and print this one out now and when it's printing. I 
I'm going to stop it midway through its print and that'll give it more than enough time to get rid, any, get rid of any of the old ink that might be left inside the print head. So now we can go ahead and print something. So we got everything set up. We got the chipless firmware set up. We have the printer set up. And now we're going to go ahead and create uh, a sublimation print. Now I've already um, have sublimation prints ready to go. So we are going to open, let's see. Working on this license plate. Okay. This is an umbrella corporation license plate that I've been working on. Uh, open. Here is kind of a template that I I use. So this is what it'll look like once it's printed. So yeah, it looks something like that when it's done. So we'll go back here and we'll go ahead and print it to the 7720. So I'm gonna go ahead now. I have a lot of printers on my network here, but we're gonna find the 7720 that we just made. Hold on one second. This is the original one. There's that profile we made. All right, and we click on print. And we'll wait for it to come out. So once the print is complete, we're going to take it to the press and get the image transferred to the license plate. We'll tape the license plate to the print and we'll insert it face down and cover it. We're going to press it on medium to high pressure at approximately 395 degrees at 60 seconds. We'll take it out and let it cool for a minute. And here's what the end result looks like. So this is how I set up the WF7720. If you can find one of these printers, make sure that you're setting it up with chipless firmware so that you don't run into any of those cartridge issues. Also, make sure that when you purchase your chipless firmware activation code to use the coupon code GORILLA and save 10%. So I hope you liked the video. If you haven't, go ahead and like and subscribe. I'll be coming out with some new content later. Until then, good luck and good night.